All right, courtesy of the recent patch, I've got a Atlas farming strategy to take advantage of the new Necropolis changes and kind of just farm everything that Necropolis is offering now and do it hopefully as uh, about efficiently as we can. A lot of min-maxing, a lot of, I think, good optimizations here. So basically, uh, Necropolis now, we are farming multiple things from it. It has corpses, and there's atlas nodes related to those. Some down here. Uh, these unresolved anguish nodes, they increase your chance for a corpse, crafting corpse thing to spawn. You have nodes up here for certain types of corpses. Uh, you can farm the devoted mods, which show up when you open the map. They're the ones that are listed in like a golden yellow that are beneficial and give you extra loot. And then we're also farming all flames which you put onto packs to replace them with other packs, which mostly combo really well with the devoted mods, but also can just kind of give you some extra loot or whatever. And uh, I'm kind of doing a setup now that is farming and taking advantage of all of that at once. And uh, not only that, it's utilizing two separate Atlas trees to do so. And uh, I will get into how all of this works. So... This one right here, my boss rush atlas, this is my normal mapping. Um, this is my primary tree, and then I have the secondary tree for when I hit a big value devoted mod, basically, and we're going to min-max some stuff with that to get as much loot as possible out of these uh, seemingly very powerful loot explosion pinata situations. So this one is basically just a Maven's destructive play type atlas. Uh, it doesn't need to be the Maven thing. You could have Eater or Exarch influence, but basically the idea is very low investment, quickly get through the maps, clear a lot of mobs, and uh, it's like Al you do this like Al can go. I'm doing most of my maps magic, just for like safety and ease and all that stuff. But um, it makes it fits well with like an Al can go play style. And the main thing we're getting from here is we're getting a lot of corpses very quickly, and we're getting all flames. So this Atlas we are doing a few things. We're getting basically all the Necropolis nodes. When these ones give us extra corpses. These ones also give us some extra corpses, or not necessarily directly, but um, increased effect of the Haunted modifiers increases corpse likeliness from dropping and also all flames. And then uh, it also gives increased chance for devoted mods, which most of them I will completely ignore, and I'll show that when I open the map, but uh, when we hit the good ones, they're worth a lot. We have the mods up here. This one you 100% want. Increased chance to have modifier tier rating crafts. The uh, the craft for modifier tier rating bonus is not really rare or anything. But like almost every high-end Necropolis craft is probably going to be using at least like 16 of these per craft. So you use a lot of them if I want to boost them. And then I also have the increased chance for meta modifier crafting outcomes. This one I think is really good. I don't know exactly what is all classified as meta mod. Things like um, corpses in the adjacent row or column or whatever that actually like apply to the corpses definitely should be considered as meta mod. Things like chance to fracture an item or split an item or chance for an additional crafting outcome I think probably also count as meta mods. And then like maybe even things like plus or minus number of explicit mods plus eye level plus fusings all that. Those might also count. I don't know exactly what all counts, but I'm pretty sure this one's really good. And it's, um, you're going to want it anyway, just for the like row and column boost ones. I think those are going to be good for high level crafts. And then, so aside from the Necropolis stuff, oh, and also over here, we have the, uh, just these small notes for increased chance for all flames to drop. Other than that, we're doing the maps fast. I currently also have some points into basically over specking map sustain, which helps me get T17 drops. That's just like a side unrelated to the Necropolis thing. We are investing in Nico, which helps us do the maps faster because packed with energy makes us get movement speed when we pick up the nodes. We have shrines, which add base monsters. Base monsters are key because those are the ones that can be interacted with with Necropolis stuff. They have the haunting and they give corpses. And basically the ways to add base monsters is shrines, boxes, and like ritual. But not when you click ritual, just initially when the ritual spawns, it spawns with monsters. Um, this tree though, I don't have boxes or ritual, I just have some shrines. And the map sustain. 
and then the uh, Maven boss rush type destructive play things up top. And this is my normal atlas that I'm running most of my maps with. Very quick, in and out, clear the map, clear the boss, next map. And it's like, you know, mostly full clear. But it's not even super critical if you don't full clear every single thing. Um, and currently with this, I'm looting just about every corpse that drops. Don't know what's going to be worth what yet, but uh, just stockpiling a lot. And you get corpses very fast. And they take up a lot of space. Just since the patch, which was last night, I have... Build up an entire quad tab, almost a regular tab. Uh, just started working on another new tab. Build up this tab. This one was halfway full. This is just for unique item monster mods. And then these ones, I believe, are mostly from before the patch, but there's a few post patch here as well. This is just in like a day. And I haven't even been like fully efficiently farming because I've been testing things and trying to figure out how to do it effectively. So it takes up a lot of space and you get a lot of corpses. And um, yeah, it's going to be pretty oppressive if you don't have a lot of stash space, if you want to store large amounts. So um, just be aware of that. So with this mapping, if you open your map device... You have, I have Maven, I have my boss rushing standard tree, I have quantity. We activate the map. If I get a good devoted mod, or not really a good one, I guess. If I get an okay devoted mod, which would be something like 700% quantity for the pack, or like 60% pack size, whatever that mid-tier stuff, um, I'll add like probably like a mid-tier all flame. You don't even need to add these. They're pretty uh, small effect overall, but it's not bad. And when I say the mid tier ones, I mean things like this, like drops tattoos, drops taint of currency, drops expedition artifacts, drops catalysts. This new one drops fractured items and you won't get a lot of stuff from these. Like the expedition ones are decent. You get some rerolls, taint of currency. Even after the patch that buffed it, I've had maps where I got literally zero. So, eh, tattoos, you seem to get a decent bit. You get like a few, at least per map. The fractured item one is like maybe five to if you rolled the map higher maybe like 10 fractured items seems like it can be good um but like if you want to just add something and not waste those not waste but like if you don't take advantage of those devoted mods it's pretty good um one that is a bit above these but not quite like the high tier that i haven't seen yet is a uh, it's an all flame of wealth something wealth in the name i don't know the exact name um that one apparently gives a lot of chaos orbs and like mid-tier currency drops I would wait for that one to get a combination of like 700 quantity on the devoted mod and also the pack, the like top high density pack in the map itself to have plus 50% pack size, which doesn't happen super often, but that one's probably worth it enough to wait for that. Now, if you get a good devoted mod, and I'm talking things like the pack monsters have 6% chance to drop a Knoll's Divine's Exalts or... The strongest mob converts items with rarity, which just means I think anything that's not a normal item or anything that maybe can be normal magic rare. Uh, it converts them into scarabs, cards, or maps. Those are pretty good. Or like that mob converts jewelry into divines, exalts, and nulls. That's when we're swapping straight up to the second atlas tree. And we are running the map like that. Um, and so basically... I'm going to show it through. So while I was setting up to record this video and I was burning through some maps because I needed to finish my Maven cycle so I could use these maps with Maven witnessing because I had a lot of excess and I was going to burn them. Uh, I was just throwing in some maps to run really quickly. This is a white crimson temple. It's not rolled at all. Um, click to activate. It has 6% chance to drop a divine orb. Which is uh, perfect, because I can show off exactly what I'm supposed to do with it. But it's a little scuffed because the high density pack, so if you look, the mobs on the here are sorted from top to bottom, high density to low density. So you always want to put the good stuff at the top high density ones, basically. Unfortunately, my top high density pack has less pack size. And the one below it has minus mod tier, so the 6% chance to drop divine becomes 48 but it'll still be really good value. It'll still be really worth showing off. 
But basically, so I opened it with my normal Atlas tree. And then I see this. I see Divine Orb. <clears throat> so what I do, I hit Escape. I can still change things around. But basically, once I've peeked and I've seen that, this part of the map device where the map goes, I can't roll this map anymore. It's locked. I can't put Scarabs in here. This spot's locked. But I can change my tree, so I can change to my devoted tree. That's the first thing I need to do. Um, I need to switch my quantity of items found to ambush, which is going to give me more boxes, which is going to give me more quantity, or not more quantity, more packs of the monsters. And I'm going to switch from Maven to Eater of Worlds, which is going to give Eater Altars, which can give things like chance to dupe currency or increased quantity and stuff. I don't know if the increased quantity on the player part does anything or not, but it might. The dupe currency definitely does. And um, then we're going to run the map with this. And so this second tree, a fully second tree that I'm only using like one in every, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 maps basically is exists to maximize the number of base monster packs and to if I get the types of modifiers that have the strongest monster in the pack convert I want to make that strongest monster better but there's not a lot we can do for that um, but so basically this tree we again have like full Nico chance it's not necessarily for the pact with energy it's for this node the price of progress it doesn't say it it just says chests contain doom spirits these doom spirits just seems to mean when you click the node it just does like a random kind of effect like it maybe I think spawned rogue exiles on me. It spawned like ghosts on me. Uh, it can spawn a strong box on the ground when you click the sulfide node. Strong box is one of the things that can add base monsters into the map. So um, just keep that one in mind. But then otherwise we have strong boxes. We have shrines basically maxing the amount of boxes and like reopen and like giving us shrines. But like something like this, the shrine buff effect, don't care. We just want the shrines. We want the monsters. And then... um ritual chance we don't care about anything else with ritual nodes we just want the ritual chance and in addition to that i have all this quantity stuff in case it matters don't know if it does i have a seance which gives five rare monsters are possessed which is good if we get the most powerful monster conversion type mods so maybe that rare mod is now ghosted which means it drops even more stuff to convert and then there's like these small nodes for quantity of items from the ghosted mobs quantity and also this notable here gives the haunted pack leaders 50 percent chance to be rare i don't know if this works for devoted packs but if it does 50 percent increased chance for the devoted packs to have a rare monster as their leader is really good and then on top of that i have more rare scarabs and the eater of worlds mods to help the uh, eater altars spawn so we switch to this tree and it maximizes all the monsters for all the Good devoted mod stuff. And then after that, we have to make sure we go through our whole checklist. So I've switched the tree. I've added the map device craft. I've switched the influence. The next thing I need is to set up the map. Put the divine orb up top. Or, I mean, in this case, it's going to be a little scuffed, but whatever. And then... Everything else kind of goes wherever. In normal maps, what I'm doing when I'm not getting a big devoted mod, I drag the bad devoted mods down to the bottom. And the haunted mods, I look at this number on the right, which is the tier, and I put the highest tiers up top. Because I want the higher packs to have the higher tiers, because the higher tiers leads to more corpses and more all flames. But for this one, we want the divine orb up top. And since this one's a one where the, every mob in the pack has a chance to drop, the all flame we want is either all flame ember of frogs or rats. Frogs adds more mobs total. Rats is a bit less. Uh, since this is divine orbs, I should probably use a frogs one. If you have one that's like the strongest monster in the pack does a big conversion, like that scarab or whatever it may be. Um, you want to use All Flame of Anarchy or All Flame of Meat Sacks. 
The meat sacks one before this patch was really insane in making people drop like 50 scarabs at a time on the scarab conversion. It seems to be nerfed specifically just for the combination of scarabs plus meat sacks. I don't know. It's weird. Like I was having ghosted meat sack rares drop four scarabs at once. I heard people told me they did rogue exiles with scarabs and the exiles drop like 10 scarabs at a time. So if you get the scarab convert, you probably want exiles. Something like the div card convert or the map convert or uh, probably just those two really are going to be like meat sacks. If you have the thing that converts jewelry into like divines or anoles or exalts, you probably want rogue exiles for that as well because rogue exiles are guaranteed to drop two rings and an amulet and a belt, which would mean four at least each time. That's all the big stuff. The pack stuff, easy. We just put frogs on our top pack. So now, instead of having whatever number of monsters I had before, basically the pack size is much higher, which we can actually, I can reopen it. If you close after you put an all flame on, it just resets. It's fine. Um, so you can see this pack has two to seven monsters. With frogs, it becomes 12 to 17. And it still keeps the high density. So with all that said, we are now ready to run this map. And again, unfortunately, this is just a white crimson temple. It's got a bad mod at the top. Both of these mods are actually bad, so it's probably going to be pretty uh, scuffed. But even then, it should still be quite good. And basically, now I run this map. I just clear the map. You don't have to really do anything special. I'm going to clear the map. I'm going to click my eater altars for a chance to dupe currency if I see that, or like player quantity if I see that, probably. Um, if you have one that uh, makes the strongest mobs in the pack thing convert, whatever, you could if you want to. There should probably be some extra ghosts running around your map. You could try to chase them into those rares. I'm not going to fucking bother with that. Um, whatever, not important. <laughs> so either way, we're just going to run this map, and we'll see how it goes. So... There's going to be frogs randomly scattered around just as packs, but then additionally, okay, well, you see. Oh, uh, let's see, chance to drop. We didn't get one. Basically, the good eater mods here that we want to see is the ones that affect the player. And uh, one thing you could do to help that is actually rush to the boss, and I probably should since this is a good one, to... uh get rid of the chance for the boss related modifiers to show up I'm gonna probably go a little bit slow and steady and I'm gonna play it safe because of hardcore stuff but um if I kill the boss those things can no longer show up as boss eater mods so we get that out of the way backtrack a bit still gonna click all these corpses Player gains increased quantity. Unfortunately, I'm not overcapped on res enough to click this. So I'm not going to risk it. If I was softcore, obviously, YOLO, just go for it. Um, and I think one further back had reduced defenses, which again, unfortunately. Approach, challenger. Especially because I don't know exactly if the quantity actually does anything. Um, I'm just not going to take that risk. And you saw the strong box also can spawn frogs spawns base mobs that's like the biggest thing in this other than the map itself and if you want to take it another step further even you probably full clear the map before touching any of the boxes so that you have the maximum number of gear altars active when you are opening them in case you get lucky and find one with like chance to dupe currency You can see this is one of those weird Nico things. I clicked the soul fight and that notable spawned a mini shrine. It can spawn an extra strong box. And that's uh, good for us. Again, we don't really care about any of this stuff. If these are just going to spawn the eater mobs. They don't drop. I don't need to click this ritual because it, even if it respawns frogs, the ones that get respawned from clicking the ritual, uh, from my testing at least, maybe I got really bad RNG. Uh, they cannot drop the divines. This is another one with Quamp. It has reduced defenses, extra damage. Again, like I'm just going to play it safe, not risk that because I don't know if it works. Keep clearing the map. Got 
another one with quantity. This one doesn't do anything bad to me, so I'm just going to click it. Vines. Uh, minus fizz reduction again. It's a little bit too risky for me to be clicking for my character in HD right now. It's probably all of these probably would be fine. I'm just not going to risk it. Um, because again, I don't know if that quantity bonus actually affects the chance of these like flat 6% drops or not. At that point, map is clear, but we have a bunch of boxes. And so we should get a little bit more here from those as well. Well, that's unlucky. I actually got frogs in that box, but they didn't drop any. And we haven't had any boxes with double open. Oh, there we go. So this one we can reopen. That's good. Uh, no frogs, though. There you go. I need more mana. Two more there. Another reopen. And I think that was everything in here. We'll do one more sweep through to make sure we didn't miss anything. Oh, one more box up this way. Kind of in a weird spot. It didn't spawn that many mobs. Still got one though. And a reopen. Alright, pretty good on the reopens actually. Not the best map for boxes though, all things considered. And that's the map. So we got 21 divine orbs in that map. And again, this was like a really worst case scenario for this whole thing. The map is unrolled, which means it has no extra pack size and no extra quantity if that matters. I don't know if it does. The top pack, the high density pack, had the negative 50% pack size mod. So that alone, I got half as many frogs from that as I could have. Just that one thing alone, we could have doubled it. And the map mod could have been better. And Crimson Temple doesn't have, like, a super high amount of mobs in it to begin with. Um, and even with all that stacked against us, we still managed 21 Divine Orbs in just that one map. When I was testing the uh, strategy, making sure I had things good, I, got a, I tested it with a map with 6% chance for Regal Orbs. And I got 73 Regal Orbs in one map. So it can get absolutely insane and so with all that um you can just literally burn maps just chain open maps in your map device and um check the devoted mods if there's nothing good just put the next map in over and over and over and over and farm just farm that with the, the devoted mod tree that way obviously you need a large supply of maps and you're gonna have to like buy all flames for certain stuff like you're just gonna run out of them almost certainly um, but otherwise, for my setup, what I would do at this point, that map's done, put my next map in, switch back to my regular tree, which is my boss rush one, switch off of ambush for increased quantity, switch back to maven, which I can't turn on because she's already witnessed on this map, and then I just go, and back to the speed mapping out can go stuff. And, um... Yeah, I think that covers everything. It's I like this strategy a lot with the mix. I don't care about doing the burning maps to just maximize the devoted. I like the mix because it's getting me a ton of crafting corpses as well. And um, kind of just everything else that the league has to offer. But uh, very rewarding. Very low investment overall. Like uh, Because of if you're farming the normal Atlas tree... I haven't had to buy any all flames for any of the stuff I've done. I've just, I just get a bunch. Like I have an entire tab basically. And then some of all flames. Most of these are low tier garbage stuff, whatever. But like I've got a ton drop. So like I haven't had to buy any yet. Um, and then the maps themselves is just like, I'm running most of my maps like this is blue maps or you just do Alcango. Very easy. Quick maps. 
And then occasionally you just get like a super juiced map. You swap your tree to take advantage of the double tree stuff. And uh, you get, you know, anywhere from 20 to like probably 100 divines if you're lucky. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you.